Thank you for welcoming me this morning. I'm delighted to be here with you uh, sharing this time of worship. I first met your pastor, Meredith, when she was going through the ordination process, and I was on the board of ordained ministry, one of the com committees that met candidates. And we first connected when we discovered that we both had sons that were Eric and Adam. So um, she had her Nathan as well, but, uh, and we've stayed good friends ever since. So I'm delighted to be here with you this morning. Let us pray. Oh Lord, let the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable in your sight. O oh God, my rock and my redeemer. Amen. Well, one, two, three, one, two, three, here we go. Well, and as most of you know, that's the date today, December 31st, 23. So it's 12, 31, 23, or one, two, three, one, two, three. Kind of a fun numerical event that really has no, no real meaning. But we can say one, two, three, here we go, ready for a new year. But time for a sermon before that happens. Today, of course, is New Year's Eve, and we say goodbye to 2023 and greet 2024. But it's also still the seventh day of Christmas. Remember, the 12 days of Christmas begin with Christmas Day. Uh, so lots of things to celebrate, and we humans seem to like counting things, counting our days, whether it's the days of Christmas or the days of the year, helps us see where we are. And we get to celebrate two holidays all at once. How good is that? As we mark the ending of one year and the beginning of the next, <clears throat> there's often time to take stock of our lives. The tradition of New Year's resolutions embodies this. We decide what it is that we want to accomplish, what the changes we want to make to how we are doing things. Um, this year, my resolution is to complete redoing the photo albums that I made for my children years ago, the ones that were made with those magnetic pages that have lost their glue so the pages fall out. Not a very serious <laughs> resolution, but it's something I wanted to get done. So, and I kept putting it off. So I think if I name that this year, it might happen. Well, John Wesley, who is of course the founder of the Methodist movement, took, had a more serious take on the new year. He thought the new year was a good time for Christians to renew their promises to God. And so he would hold a covenant renewal service. Covenants, of course, are the solemn promises made between two parties. And here we talk about the covenant between God and humanity. And Wesley wrote, on one side, the covenant is God's promise that God will fulfill in and through us all that was declared in Christ Jesus, that God's promise still stands, we are sure, for we have known God's goodness. God is faithful. God is loving us no matter what. But on the other side of that covenant are the promises we have made to God. In Wesley's words, quote, pledge to live no more unto ourselves, but to the one who loved us, unquote. And as we know all too well, we humans are not always perfect in keeping our promises. And so we need to keep renewing that covenant trying over, starting again, reminding ourselves that we are called to be faithful, evaluating our living, and most especially, our relationship with God. It's a time to find a new beginning. 
And the scriptures today help us understand what God wants from us. Matthew describes Jesus evaluating people at the very end of time. And those who showed mercy and kindness to people in distress find blessing in God's eyes. Feed the hungry. Give the thirsty something to drink. Clothe the naked. Take care of those who are sick. Welcome the stranger. Visit the prisoner. That's the criteria for holy living. And I can easily come up with three quick examples of churches that are doing this. Um, clothe the naked. I served Marysville during COVID, and they have had for years clothes for kids, which provides children with school clothes, um, both gently used and new, always new shoes, underwear, and socks for each kid. And then many of you have probably read of the work done at Riverton Park, which is welcoming asylum seekers that have no place to go. Welcome the stranger. And of course, your own safe parking program offers welcome to those who are living in their vehicles. Welcome the stranger. Just three examples of churches who are living out what Jesus asked us to do. It's striking that in this story of the final judgment, people aren't evaluated on their proper beliefs or even what they say but on what they do, on their actions. Acts of love and mercy are what is truly important, particularly acts of love and mercy directed to those in need, responding to the needs of the world. You see, God's love is wide and expansive, but God needs human agents to disperse that love to everyone. That's our job. So when did we see you in need and reached out to you? The people asked Jesus. And Jesus says, I assure you, when you did it for one of the least of my siblings, you did it to me. You see, Jesus is present in each and every person if we have the eyes to see them. Mother Teresa famously said, I see Jesus in every human being. I say to myself, this is hungry Jesus, I must feed him. This is sick Jesus. This one has leprosy or gangrene, I must wash him and tend to him. I serve because I love Jesus. On the other hand, those who were judged for not caring for Jesus said, when did we see you? hungry, thirsty, or in need. When did we see you and ignore you? We were looking for you. And Jesus said, if you haven't done it for the least of these, you haven't done it for me. Serving Jesus calls for serving other humans. Seeing the Christ that is present in each and every one the faithful life involves responding to the needs of the world, recognizing how deeply we are all connected to one another. It's about building the community, the kingdom, where everyone thrives. You know, part of this is seeing things as God sees them. The people didn't see Jesus. You know, when I think about seeing years ago, I was living in a house that had been owned by my aunt and uncle for years, and there was this rhododendron out front that just refused to bloom, and I was grumbling about it to a friend, and she looked at it and said, that strange bark for a roadie. And suddenly I knew it was not a roadie, it was a madrona. It just, in a, you know, it just came so quickly, one of those duh moments. And, and I really wish for that kind of shift 
in seeing as I look at people in the world. It's easy to judge people by their either their outward appearance or the group they're part of. You know, we group people together and say they're all the same. All old ladies are grumpy and set in their ways and will never change. Um, so may God change my vision until I see Christ in every person, noticing their unique gifts, figuring out what they need to be whole and happy and healthy. And it's not an easy task. It's a real struggle to see Christ in those I disagree with, in those whose values are different than mine. Yet they are God's beloved. Then we heard Psalm 8 sing of God's glory. God can do amazing things. If you listen, God uses the power of babbling infants to overcome evil. How cool is that? God sets the moon and stars in the heavens, those beautiful, intricate patterns that we are still learning to understand. Then, what are humans that you think about them? What are humans that you pay attention to them? And it's a valid question. Given the, val the vastness of creation, why should God pay attention to humanity? Well, the writer answers the question. You've made them only slightly less than divine, crowning them with glory and honor. Humanity, slightly less than God, crowned with glory and honor. I remember teaching that in an adult study once, and a woman broke down in tears that she was so loved and that God cared so much. Well, humans may have be a little lower than God, but they have work to do, according to the psalm. You, you've let humanity rule over your handiwork putting everything under their feet, and then listing all the creatures. I hear in this a call to care for creation. And given the real dangers of global warming on our planet today, Psalm 8, written thousands of years ago, reminds us that we are responsible not just for the well-being of humanity, but for the well-being of all creation. So I like reading those two scriptures together. Matthew calls us to care for those in our community who are in need, and Psalm 8 calls us to care for creation. God wants us to be responsible for each other and responsible to the world. So this new, new Year's Eve, we give thanks for all that God has given us, for the love that is poured out every day. We are so grateful that God loves us no matter what. We are amazed that God really trusts us to do the work of loving and caring for each other and for creation. Now, for this congregation, I want you to hear this truth. You do the covenant renewal service every Sunday. That's the prayer you're saying over the offering. Oh God, we know that we are not self-made. In truth, we are yours. Make us into what you will. Well, that's John Wesley's covenant prayer from that covenant renewal service. And it reminds us that we belong to God. Doesn't guarantee that life is going to be easy or, or free of suffering. But in that prayer, we recommit our lives to God. We aren't in control. God is. Well, Wesley's uh, covenant service had some suggestions for how one might live out that covenant. First, set some time to be alone with God. Next, be serious in spirit 
and in a spirit of holy awe and reverence. Oh, and here I have to argue a little bit with Wesley. We need laughter as well as seriousness. Sometimes we need it more than seriousness. And maybe we need serious play. We uh, sometimes take ourselves too seriously. But I get what he's talking about. Treat, treat life with, with as some importance. And then claim God's covenant and rely on God's promises more than your own strength. You know, we often think we can't do something, but God can use what we are and accomplish many things. Trust that God will carry us through. Finally, reser resolve to be faithful. And that's, that's the New Year's resolution we all should make. Resolve to be faithful to God today and every day. We know that we can't do this by our own efforts, but we trust that God is really able to work through us ordinary folks. So where is God speaking to you today? Will you renew your promise to love God and care for each other and care for creation? When we get around in this service to our prayer over our offering, let that be our formal covenant renewal, giving ourselves to God all over again. New Year offers a new beginning. Who knows what adventures God has for us in the year ahead. Whatever happens, whatever happens in this year, God is with us, loving us, helping us to become agents of grace and peace. Thanks be to God. Amen.